I'm Kerry from New Adventures and I'm here today with Shoko and with Steph and we're going to do a creative task called Top and Tail. This is a fantastic task for creating movement that you wouldn't usually make. It's really great also for coordination and for working together, collaboration and collaborative listening skills. It's fantastic. We use it a lot in new adventures. Let's get started. That's it, let's move around, fantastic. So this is inspired by a scene in Act One where the governors bring a basket of toys in for the orphans and the orphans have never seen toys like this before and it's such a magical, incredible moment. We've kind of taken that idea of toys and games from the Victorian era and we're going to use those to create some of our movement, okay? So first of all, I want you to decide if you are going to be an A or a B. So if you're an A, like Steph, uh, you're going to do the top. And if you're a B, like Shoko, then you're going to be the tail. Okay? So let's go to tops first, to A's first. So thinking about games and toys that children played in the Victorian era, now, if you'd like to have a look at some, they should be appearing on your screen now. Feel free to pause the video, jot them down for reference. Okay, so we're going to start with A, which is Steph, who's a top. Um, and some of the games that we use, that we talked about as a kind of inspiration were things like hula hoops, skipping ropes, uh, throwing balls, catapults, tennis, um, hide and seek, skipping, lots and lots of fun things to play with here. Um, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to choose four games. So you're going to choose, use your list to choose four games, okay? And then for each game, you're going to create two moves that show how you might uh, play or use that toy or play that game. Okay, so uh, let's use an example. So your first game is? Yo-yo. Yo-yo, great. So Steph is only gonna use her top to, to do this movement, hence top and tail, yeah? So she's only gonna use the top part to do this movement here. And that's a really important rule. So we don't shift around the space. It's just gonna be very static but she can use direction and she can look in different places um, at the same time, okay? So this is an example of one of her games. So it's a hula hoop, so her first move. Yo-yo. Oh, it's yo-yo, <laughs> yo-yo. So her first move is spinning the yo-yo, fantastic. So that could be the first move. And then the second one, is boinging the yo-yo, lovely, boinging the yo-yo. So that's her two moves. So you need to create two moves for each of your four games, yeah? So in the end, you'll have one, two for one game, three, four for the second, five, six for the third, seven, eight for the fourth. And that's going to fit. So we're going to really think about the musicality of this already. It's going to fit into a count of four eights. Okay, so we'll count that at the end once I've explained what the tails are doing because you'll be standing around at this point. So you okay with that, Steph? Great. So if you're a bee, you're a tail. Um, and for the tails, what I want you to do is I want you to do um, a moving pattern, yeah? A pattern that shifts around the space. You can move in any direction, yeah? You can move anywhere, the choice is yours, but there's a few things that I want you to include. So I want you to include um, a crouch, a bounce, a march, and a jog, okay? Or a kind of jiggle, a jiggle or a jog, yeah? So that's crouch, march, jiggle or jog, yeah, and a bounce, okay? And again, that is gonna fit into our four eights, into our musical framing. So often we work with a lot of rhythm um, and we find that there's a lot of value in that rhythm. So let's count through what those four eights would sound like, okay? Um, so we'd go and a one and a two and a three and four and a five and a six and a seven and an eight and a two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and a three, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, and a four, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so what's really important about this task is that A's only use their top and they do not move anywhere else in space and B's only move around in space but they don't get jiggy with their tops on the top, okay? Yeah, so you have to be really disciplined and try and, you know, if you're shifting, try not to do anything else, that's quite tricky, okay? My advice here is to really stay simple, okay? Stay really simple because as the um, task develops, it can feel a little bit tricky and a little bit challenging. So simple is good here, okay? Great. So let's have a little look at what you've done. Yeah, let's look at the top first. I'll count it, I think. Here we go. And a one, and a two, and a three, and four, and five, six, seven, eight, and a one, two, three, four, and five, six, seven, eight, and a one, two, and a three, four, and a five, six, and a seven, eight, and one, two, and three, four, and five, six, seven, eight. Lovely. Oh, I saw skipping in there and a bit of a patty cake. Yeah, and, and hi. I saw hide and seek, fantastic. Yeah, really good. So that's our top, it's a great example. And now Shoko's gonna show us her tail. Okay, here we go. And a one, and a two, and a three, and four, and a five, and a six, and a seven, and a eight, and a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and a one, two, three, four, and a five, six, Seven, eight, and a one, and a two, and a three, and a four, and a five, six, seven, and eight. Great. Yeah? Really good. So we've got our top and our tail. Fantastic. So here is the tricky part. What we're going to do next is we're going to combine our top and our tail. Okay? And what we want to try and do is really stick to the lovely rhythm and choices that you made. Yes, well, it's up to you about how you fitted your phrases into that four eights. I want you to really try and stick to that. And this can feel a bit tricky. Sometimes it can feel like, oh, it doesn't feel good. And that's often what makes really good material. And that's why this task is so fantastic. Okay, let's give a little example of how you might work together to put the top on the tail, just so that um, the other dancers have a good idea of how to tackle this. Yeah? Yeah. So what's happening? Oh, great. So Shoko is showing Steph her tail first, her movement, and Right, and then Steph is showing Shoko her movement. So they're learning each other's. They're working together to learn each other's. And now they're working out how they fit together. Oh, yeah, great. So we've done that for the rest of the phrase. And this is what something like this might look like. Okay, I'll count it first, yeah. Great. And a one, and a two, and a three, and a four, and a five, and a six, and a seven, and a eight, and a one. Two, three, four, and a five, six, seven, eight, and a one. Two, three, four, and a five, six, seven, eight, and a one, and a two, and a three, and a four, and a five, six, seven, eight. Fantastic. What a lovely phrase of material. Now they make it look super easy, but believe me, it took them a little bit of time to get it looking so smooth and really coordinated and working together. So stick with it. It's a really fantastic task, but you have to stick with it. Okay. Um, I think what would be lovely is if we add the music now, so we hear the musicality of it. Um, and Shoko and Steph, what I'd love you to think about now is the intention of this. So it's about the toys, it's about the game, it's about playing. And imagine that you um, haven't had a toy like this before. What does that feel like? And start to bring some of that intention into the phrase as well. Yeah? 
Fantastic. So we're going to do it to music now and I'm going to leave Steph and Shoko to perform this for you. Fantastic, well done, that was such a brilliant phrase. So this is really just a starting point. You can take this anywhere, but the most important thing is to have fun and top and tail. <laughs>